biggest station in the world playing all of today's hits. You're listening to Instinct Radio. Good afternoon and welcome. I'm your host for today, uh, Michelle Dosbert, and this is RCR Presents Real Discussions. Um, I am excited, but I'm a little disappointed. Yeah, this is not Tamika Lowry Pugh. <laughs> this is Phyllis Robinson. Unfortunately, we got um, very late, 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 late news that um, Tamiko couldn't make it today to be my guest. Um, we were going to talk about laws that protect us. So it was really in conjunction with Domestic uh, Violence Month, which is today. Today is October 1st. So it was all going to be aligned with that. So it was going to be a very interesting conversation. Um, Unfortunately, or fortunately for her, she has been uh, nominated to be the VP of the 100 Black Women Coalition. And so that is taking place uh, around right now. So unfortunately, she was not able to join us today. So Phyllis and I have some Hello. other business that we were doing, and we're going to talk about that. But she was she was in the neighborhood. <laughs> In route. Phyllis was in the neighborhood because um, we are, I was giving her some uh, clothing donations, really some blankets because we are doing the Angel Lighthouse uh, Coats for Comfort Drive. And so we started talking in the car and then I said, you know, just come on and we'll just kind of tell the people out. I, I apologize. I don't have Tamiko, but she's doing something really great at the moment. But, and we're going to um, do a replay um, in honor of Domestic Violence Month. I'm going to replay um, my conversation with uh, Monica Thornton, who is the founder and CEO of uh, Powerful Beginnings, and she is doing wonderful things in Columbus, Georgia. And she's here in Atlanta, and there's a big gala that she's having. She has every year. It's a domestic violence, domestic, domestic violence gala in Columbus, Georgia, and it's going to be held on October 14th, and I will be the mistress of ceremonies there, so I'm awesome. honored to be a part of that. Yes, yes. And so the DJ for the evening will be uh, DJ Tora Torres. And so we are going to celebrate women uh, survivors, public and privately, but there will be a few women in the audience that will be celebrated for their courageous mm -hmm. efforts to walk away from a very domestic violence situation and reclaim and reown and renew themselves and, and have a new life. And, and so we, we get all get dressed mm -hmm. up. We wear purple. Oh, um, it's wow. beautiful. The sentiments are great. Um, we have um, government officials there, lawmakers. It's mm -hmm. pretty, it was pretty impressive. Um, and this is their second or third one doing it, so I'm honored to be a part of it. So we're going to show that conversation shortly um, once Phyllis and I kind of air our, our our talk for today. So hi, Phyllis. Hello. How are you? I'm, I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming in. I mean, just being in the neighborhood, just it was just last minute it was a pinch but right. tell tell the people what you and i have been trying to do for the past week or two well trying to help the community mm -hmm. inform them about different topics that are going on globally mm -hmm. uh putting out information to them to take action yes so um that subject matter can deal with the natural disasters mm -hmm. that are going on mm -hmm. uh all the way locally here with people in particular neighborhoods who are needing help yes. that are homeless. Yes. So you have, you came to me, and I'm always honored when you want me to partner with you on mm -hmm. things. This is like our second or third collaboration right. where we're giving back to communities, whether it be through organizations directly to kids or um, people that really need it. So this Angel Lighthouse Codes for Comfort, that's what we've been doing. So tell us a little bit about uh, Angel Lighthouse, if you can. Well... It just kind of happened. Okay. Angel Lighthouse. I kind of go back like this. You know, I'm always trying to do something for the community, yes, especially for children. Mm -hmm. So um, about a month ago, a friend of mine uh, got in contact with me to come to um, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, to help her uh, raise funding to build a homeless shelter for women and children. Mm. And so um, I didn't hesitate. I just well, rescheduled my clients and said, <laughs> I'll be there because, you know, I'm a take action type person. Yes, you are. So um, I ventured down there and I was just really shocked to see that um, there are a lot of young children without uh, two parents in their family or just 
parent list. Mm-hmm. So I went down there to uh, do some haircuts and, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, use my voice mm-hmm. to help raise the awareness. Mm-hmm. So, okay, once I got back to Atlanta, I was asked to partner with the Angel Lighthouse. Okay, great. And so I shared with the uh, founder, which her name is Astrid Lewis, mm-hmm. um, that Atlanta has uh, a major population of homeless yes, uh, yes. people too. Yes. So it just dropped in my spirit. Why not we, you know, start taking action here? And mm. so uh, what came across was that it's about to get cold. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we came together th- uh, to come up with the coat. Mm-hmm. for comfort mm-hmm. drive mm-hmm. so immediately i thought about you real <laughs> chicks rock of <laughs> uh, the action our words mm-hmm. and the natural creations hair salon mm-hmm. all three of um, these uh organizations or businesses mm-hmm. have we have done things together yes. to uh, do the right thing for our people yes. locally and globally yes yes and yes. so um that's what's going on right and, now. And let's talk about the homelessness here. Cause um, when I first came on the scene, I, I really had a compassion for it and mm-hmm. it has grown tremendously. Um, there are homeless people or displaced people mm-hmm. just everywhere. And it's, right. and what, what it's very hard to swallow or process because everybody is passing them by and mm-hmm. we, we can only do but so much. We're doing what we can. And I know there are other people that stop give food, give a dollar, give Mm -hmm. clothes, just try to do what they can within their resources. But it's bigger than us. Like there needs to be that there, there are some city officials, there needs to be something happening to help people because there are so many of them living on the streets Uh, as we're going to get something to eat Mm -hmm. and go into businesses. There are people just propped up on the corner sitting in bus, um, at bus sleeping in bus stops sleeping at outdoor restaurants people are everywhere yes i feel like it's uh an epidemic in atlanta in particular because you can uh go down north side drive which is a major street Mm -hmm. here in atlanta and as i was sharing with you earlier i see this lady to me who's a symbol of homelessness and i call her the suitcase lady right um, I have to come through that way to go to work, but you will see this lady either walking with her suitcase on her head or sitting by her suitcase. But not only is she walking up and down Northside Drive, but mm-hmm. there are women and children and men too, mm-hmm. but mostly women and children. And and those women are like your auntie, your your mama, yeah. and you know I'm bothered by that. Mm-hmm. But again, I don't know. Uh, on the uh, political side, mm. what can be done? Because, right. as you know, they just closed the shelter down on Pine Street. Mm. Yes, it was mm. closed about a month ago. Mm. And still in those areas around yes. there, you see, uh, you know, homeless people. Yeah, Pine Street, that was a big one, wasn't yes, it? Yes, that was the, the major one. The big one, yes. yeah. And like at that Walgreens on Piedmont, um at any given day, you could see women with their babies in a stroller sitting there feeding them out cans. I mean, it's just it's just horrible yeah, it is. because um, actually they need a, a stable uh, place to uh, lay their heads and, you know, take baths and just food. Yes. Life is happening. Yeah. Life is happening. So we want to challenge the people that are listening. If you know anybody that's in political office, running for office, they think they have a platform, they got something to say, please inbox me their name so I can get them on the show because we want to give them an opportunity to speak to the community, to speak to people. This is always, you know, Real Chicks Rock has always been about giving back through community service, and so we want to give people that have something, something to say, a platform to say it. So if there's ways as registered voters as people that live in this city because we like our city we like yes, where we, we live love it. so we're not trying to throw any shade we want to try <laughs> to keep it you know uh, a beautiful city that it is and we want to help people as much as we possibly can we want to be able to talk to those people that might have some answers because phyllis and i we tend to 
we're hamsters in the cage. Mm -hmm. We're trying to figure out what can we do innovatively, differently to reach the masses. And we know we can't get to everybody, but we're committed to helping as many people as we possibly can. So we're going to talk later when we turn the mics off and brainstorm about some Mm -hmm. other things that are going on in Phyllis's head right now. You see the wheels (laughs) spinning? The wheels are spinning right now, so we'll probably come out and do some other things. I want to talk about, Phyllis, with you because you shared with me when we were in the green room segment that, because yesterday you and I were supposed to meet to do this exchange of all the blankets and things that I have for the Angel Lighthouse. Um, But unfortunately, you couldn't meet with me because your day was all thrown off due to games going on in the city, and and it just kind of threw your whole mechanism off, if if you will. So I kind of want to talk about, you know, just how sports is, is playing a role in our city right now, the behaviors. You know, tell, tell okay. people a little bit about um, what, what happened yesterday well, with you. Well, I'm going to use the broad word of gentrification. All right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I work in Midtown, 675. West Peachtree Street Mm -hmm. at She Cuts Mm -hmm. Studio. And um, I couldn't find any place to park yesterday due to the football games Mm -hmm. or any other special events. And so um, I lost money. Mm. But this is just starting to happen like right now. But um, there are a lot of employees in midtown who do work on the weekend Mm -hmm. are having these issues it's either meters are broken or nowhere to park or streets are blocked off or such as myself the space where i pay to park Mm -hmm. per month Mm -hmm. was sold to Mm -hmm. somebody who has a football game Mm -hmm. so um that's another major issue Mm -hmm. in atlanta to me it deals with gentrification Mm -hmm. Hmm. And I know that's a broad word, but um, I just think that on a whole nother level, they're just insensitive to uh, the population of people that have been living in Atlanta yeah. here for a while yeah. uh, as far as their way of life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, again, we need some answers or, uh, you know, find a way around this. Yeah. I, and, you know, people are looking at it as – is definitely a money opportunity. It's definitely opportunity for those that have money that or can make money off of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I was out last night and I was talking to somebody and they were basically saying, "There's not enough homes. Another, there's not Affordable enough houses. House. Exactly. You know, he was saying that, but then he was saying it from a different perspective. He was saying there was not enough housing for all the people in Atlanta. And I said, "What are you talking about? They're building up all the time." But he saw money. You know, he saw an opportunity to make money to get in to 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 buy land, to buy um, property that's needing rehabbed, to get it, turn it around. So it's just a... Well, I'm going to give you, I hate the button, but I'm going to give you an example of a young uh, client of mine who has his uh, fiance and his baby. Mm -hmm. They've already qualified for a home Mm -hmm. and they've been rejected four times. Mm -hmm. And it's within the, you know, the area of where the dome has been built. And I don't understand that, but in just uh, conversing with him a little bit more, he was saying that they're basically selling uh, dirt or the land to yeah. people out of town. So yes. they're um, selling the dream to other people. Mm. And I just received the article about Amazon wanting to come here. Yes, yes. But also, what about the people here? Yeah. You know, it's... It's not fair, but, you know, again, we need some type of dialogue to Mm -hmm. uh, know what we need to do to uh, move with the change. Yeah. I mean, that is an issue that there isn't any affordable housing either. That's Mm -hmm. the other thing, too, because places that used to be are no longer offering that. thousand dollars plus up. It's just too much money. But the thing is, I kind of want to talk about this, too, and I'm moving in different things because we talked about a lot of different things this morning. I don't want to I don't want to miss anything. But (laughs) why for us? We have to have a dialogue. I see other cultures mobilize. I sure. see pe- I, when something happens, crisis or otherwise, they mobilize, right? There isn't one key person mm-hmm. that's, all right, everybody move over here. No, 
people are moving and they do it in small pockets mm -hmm. with the expectancy that it will bubble up like they'll take all that they've gotten and roll it into one type of initiative or you know one target if you will and I, and what i'm talking about is especially with the hurricanes right so mm -hmm. a lot of people i know a lot of people that are puerto rican descent a lot of and it, their heart is breaking it's a heartbreaking situation um the fact that water can't be reached people are dying and that they are tied they are part of the united states and we as a as a country have not operated expeditiously as we should to give them the resources and so they have taken mm -hmm. the matters into their own hands by getting pallets of water getting the clothes right. taking donations getting private planes sending the resources down there doing whatever it takes mm -hmm. to make it happen i wonder I, I want to know what happened to that fire for us like do you feel we still operate that way i feel like perhaps you know we're for the most part, complacent mm. until it, it has hit us Directly. personally okay. All right. in our face. Okay. But um, I wanted to touch bases uh, with you expressing that emergency, you know, services and stuff. Yes. Need to get, you know, from my military experience, okay. right away, you know, it's not any rocket science that you have the levels of, like, uh, the Army. Mm -hmm. Air Force, Navy, and the Marines. Mm -hmm. But the first thing, like what we saw down at Katrina, you should have air aid. And yes. like at this point, all those Caribbean islands, not just Puerto Rico yes. Yes. and all the others, need emergency help. They so do. there is air aid. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of sea rations? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if there is dirty water, then you can drop those sea rations in go. the areas or pack they have pouches of water mm -hmm. okay there's uh people who should be on a logistics team mm. to think out it's not that i mean it, it, the media or whomever else is in charge are making it seem complicated but those are the types of solutions or logistics or things that need to be dealt with in the right now time right. so i feel the pain of the lady in puerto rico mm -hmm. but on any different level like the homelessness just all these subject matter there are solutions mm -hmm. because we do live in an abundance world mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. to me we, mm -hmm. do. we do we do so you know man i have to shake my head because sometimes <laughs> i become exhausted <laughs> with knowing that there's answers you know to these situations that have gotten out of hand yeah they've gotten out of hand and then the other thing we we were chatting about was the whole energy around football gotta i gotta I, I i haven't said anything about it i, I gotta say something i've been taking the knee real talk um yeah I, i'm a sports head i am a sports head i love all <laughs> kind of sports but I have taken a seat. I've taken a knee. I'm not watching any any form of football. And I don't even know if I'm going to come back to the game. Well, to be honest with you, when I was an athlete, I hated that song. Really? But I just felt some kind of way yeah. about it. I'm, yeah. uh, that's just my personal yeah. thoughts, okay? But um, at this point, I just don't feel that, uh, well, <laughs> I know it's, you know, I need to possibly be politically correct but i'm Go. a little sense of humor Go. about it Go. to me is you know for us and me thinking about doing those times when my parents watched the nfl they were too busy having a great time mm -hmm. you know so i thought about the song the funkadelics mm -hmm. one nation under a new group. group okay, okay. so okay. if we want to have fun and do that and you know it's you up to you personally if you want to bend down the knee or whatever you want to do then that's that's you personally. Right, right. Okay. You see the other people out there burning jerseys, tickets or whatever, <laughs> but then go ahead. Because the way I look at it, that those athletes are getting paid in full. Yes. But then I also look at it from this point of view. Okay. You got, you have now some, um, people of color billionaires. Mm. So, okay, let's go build our own football stadium <laughs> and have a big party. <laughs> And give out tickets and give to the out folks tickets. in the hood yeah. and uh, create jobs for the kids, mm. you know, to pass out popcorn, soda, whatever you mm -hmm. want to do. I'm, I'm going to leave this. <laughs> I, I heard some statistics that 70% of the players 
in the NFL are black. 70% of the players of the NFL are black. 70% Ooh. of the N of the players in the NFL are black. Right. How many are black owners? All right. Okay. Uh, right. And we're fighting for head coach positions and all that. There, but 70% of the players are black. And if people can express how they feel without having to be threatened without having to be um, fired, without getting a job. I, I, I just don't know what to say. At the end of the day, though, mm -hmm. it is entertainment, right? So some people take it with a grain of salt. It's really yeah. no big deal. Whether I watch it or not, it's not a big deal. I think, but on the other hand, though, there's power in numbers, right? There's power in money. Like when money starts leaving pockets, then people are going to start paying attention. And the best way to get them is to don't support it. That's the and, I, and that's just my viewpoint on it. And I think it just still needs to be cleared up the reason why he's bent down on one knee or mm -hmm. any anybody is bent down a knee mm -hmm. or ignoring that song is because um not because of the veterans, but no. because the we disagree with racism and police brutality. There you go. Okay. And at this point I, in my lifetime, I'm just hoping this whole subject matter of racism and all that stuff can just, you know, go down the drain eventually. I never knew how it just surfaced yeah, it's because just, yeah, it's uh, when you now. think about President Obama, I don't, I didn't feel this type yeah, of climate. Yeah. It might have been there, mm -hmm. hushing, but golly. It's always been there, but now that you have a person that gives you the autonomy and the mm -hmm. power to make you express it now, so things that were under the rock, under the mm -hmm. bed in the closet is open so everything True. is fair game now and so people f people feel that if they don't like you because of the color of your skin they have every right to tell you and they have every right to tell you to go back where you came from and so it's just a very negative dialogue it's a very negative space and mm -hmm. so the country is divided but there's still an opportunity to we can do our part and that's what the conversations that we've been having to have and so we need to figure these things out through legislation through community activism through service through it, it is a big elephant right and mm -hmm. the thing is i don't want anybody to be disparaged about it the fact of the matter is you can impact one person at a time right so we may have to go back to some grassroots movements in order to be able to reach and connect with like-minded people that want to see some change I'd like and difference. to see a, a panel discussion mm. but i also would like to put this out there i would like to say that atlanta at this point presents the best blueprint especially the house music in the park mm. for people getting along yeah and and being peace yeah and treating everyone uh, as community mm -hmm. and family because mm -hmm. people come from all over the world. True. true. You know? Yeah. It's true. It's true. Yeah. I mean, it's it. We're we're fortunate. I mean, there's yeah. there's incidences, I'm sure, but you know, overall, we're not making the news like every day no. where other cities are are really catching right. catching it. They're catching some hell just because of the color of their skin and mm -hmm. where they are, the time and the place and who they right. interact with at that time. So we are very fortunate in a lot of regards, but that still doesn't mean we sleep comfortably. Right. You know what I'm saying? There's still something inside of most of us that keeps us up or wonders what the next move should be. How do we mm -hmm. move through this? Because we got kids, we got grandkids, we That's got nieces, nephews. Concern. Right. We got godchildren. We got to leave something. We're trying to figure mm -hmm. out what is that, what kind of state we're going to leave this in for them. So that's what we're really trying to figure out. So that's our that was our heavy commentary for the day. Yes, it was. <laughs> we just had we to kind of like off our chest. we had to get that off our chest. So thank you, Phil, right. for coming through. So we got some things. So on the on the note of house, right? House right. House. So ATL house notes. Yay! We got some ATL house <laughs> notes. Shouts out to the team. I think that you know that's Brian, that's Allison, that's Andrea Marks, that's um, De Grazier. I am a supporting person of ATL House Notes. Go and like that page. I don't know if you can see that. Go and like that page. It's on social media. Anything pertaining to houses out there, anything you want to know. So a lot of people like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what to do. I don't know who's playing, what's going on. It's out there. We push it out every week. Um, so if you got a flyer, if you know something that's going on, let ATL House know about it so that they can push it out to the masses because we want to bring down walls, bring 
people right. together, give people a free, safe space where they can, they're free to express themselves through music, through dance, through having a drink. You know, we leave our burdens at the door and we come in and we have a good time. So this is a really good uh, thing for us here in Atlanta. We just want to kind of continue to build and move the genre. Um, like I said at the beginning, Domestic Violence Gala in Columbus, Georgia. So if you can't attend and you want to be able to support, it's all about support. Um, Shouts out to Tom Joyner and people that right. have credibility Jay-Z, and Jay-Z and Fat J-Lo Joe. and everybody that's giving back and doing things. I think it's a person's character that speaks. And I bring up Tom Joyner because he's he donated like $20,000 when Harvey hit. Mm-hmm. And now it's like a $250,000 amount. And he said he's got net money from people just giving donations as little as five dollars so when you think that your amount won't make a difference it can and it will so if you can't physically be somewhere um, feel free to make a donation no matter how small it is if it comes from a good place in your heart with good intentions it's going to do wonders so keep that in mind so go out there and follow um, powerful beginnings they're on Instagram they got a, a a Facebook page make that donation connect so that we can continue to empower other people and then um us here in atlanta i know the weather just turned a little yes, this did. morning like like a little a little bit like yeah like you need to get out of them shorts it's not happening no more <laughs> till next year 2018 so in the meantime we talked about homelessness if you got some lightly used sweaters coats things that you don't really want it's out of style it ain't part of your repertoire we'll take it we'll take blankets as well because that season will come upon right. us and we want to make sure we can do what we can mm-hmm. and we want to get to a place that we can teach people how to fish and not just continue to give them the fish so we know that there's some people out there that's going to need a little help and we're going to try to figure out how we can get them the help that they need but in the meantime we'll take whatever you don't use again sweaters jackets coats scarves hats blankets and, right and, yeah and you can reach if you need for it to be picked up you can reach me at six seven eight eight five one two nine four seven or email me p a r dot a r t dot l l c or be in contact with, with Michelle. Yeah, yeah, you know right and here. or uh a couple of other um drop off locations is Cedar Cedar Farm at forty one zero eight Anderson Le- Les Lizzy Lane, Snellville, Georgia, three hundred thirty nine or Natural Creation Salon, that's 2380 Benjamin E. Mays Drive, Southwest 30311. Mm-hmm. So, so get at us, get at us. So um, some other announcements for us. Me, women about their business, right. We're going to have a happy hour thing going on at Cat's Cafe. Shout out cool. to Jay Roach, who picked a couple of women that's um, doing a thing uh, from a business perspective. Um, thank you. Thank you, Jay, for asking me to be a part of it. I'm going to be there moving some shirts you know i move product when i can (laughs) so we're going to be doing that music will be played in the background of course it'll be a good vibe good time come through network socialize uh another counterpart of mine will be lisa lee artistry she'll be there moving some uh some of her artwork and there's going to be some other vendors there but it's all about the women that are about their business about that hustle about that grind pushing doing what they do we're going to be there october 6th friday coming up friday cats cafe here in atlanta then another one hmm got some other things i told you about this the gala for october 14th october 21st check this out never happened before stan zeff will not be here stan zeff will not be in the country he will be out of the country and tambor will go on without stan zeff yes i'm excited about that and so the lineup will be kevin latham in the middle tor torres right 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 right. and dj b ryan edwards so come through you better come through that's october 21st doors open at 10 we will be at wild pitch that's 255 trinity avenue so come and get your life tell a friend tell a friend tell a friend to come through and come through for that (laughs) so we got a lot of stuff going on in october you know in the midst of all the chaos and things that are crazy we are still trying to make sure that we have a fun-filled, loving uh, right. life here with the people here that we know and interact. So I'm going to leave you with um, Monica Thornton, founder and CEO of Powerful Beginnings. Our conversation, not this year, but last year, I thought it was very insightful, very informative. This is um, 
Domestic Violence Awareness Month, October 1st, the whole month, right? So we're doing that. So wear your purple for that. It's also Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so we're, do that too. Okay. So pink is a color. Purple's a color. It's all about raising the awareness. Give back. Do what you can. I love you. Thank you guys for always supporting me. Thank you. Thank you, you for the shares. Until the next time, continue to rock on. Take care. The biggest station in the world playing all of today's hits. You're listening to Instinct Radio. All of today's hits. You're listening to Instinct Radio. Hi, good afternoon. Welcome for joining us, joining us with uh, RCR Presents Real Discussions. I'm your host for today, Michelle dawes -Bird. And even though I have a huge smile on my face, we're really going to touch on a very serious, serious subject today. Um, it's all about dealing with breaking the cycle, breaking the cycle and dealing with abusive relationships, mentally, verbally, and physically. But before we really get into that, I just wanted to share a little bit about what Real Chicks Rock is all about. It's all about empowering people, empowering women primarily, and we do that through various different ways. Today's format, we're doing it through the arts and through media. Another way that we do it is through apparel. Uh, another way we do it is through mentoring and public speaking. And the last point is through community service. And today, that's gonna be real prevalent today because we wanna take this platform and this opportunity to give back.